Hey, welcome back to Widowed Too Soon. This is your host, Mark Massaro. I'm back. I'm back. I'm here with my friend and co-host, Michelle Bader Ebersoul. What's up, Michelle? <laughs> I wanted to sing back streets back. All right. <laughs> that was in my head, you but I have. held back. I held back, but no, I know it's no, hard it's, sometimes. And like every time you were gone, I was like, I want to sing all by myself, but I'm going to hold back, you know, Celine Dion all by myself. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here is that with who it me. Is? Yes. Oh, Celine. I don't know. I just don't you know it. your don't you know some Celine? I love Celine. She speaks to my soul. Wait. She yeah, wait, hold on. I'm trying. Wait, she has another um didn't she have one of the songs in Titanic? Yes, my heart will go on. Yeah. Here's fun fact. She's a widow. See? I know so is she? Yeah, because I, I didn't just know that. Here's a fun fact. I watched this new movie that came out with Joel um, and it was something like it was a fake movie, but Celine Dion was in it. And she's like, you know that I'm widowed. It was about, oh, because someone else had died. Anyway, she's a widow. I looked it up. She really is. Oh, I didn't so know she that. Was, she was kind of talking about that. So widows, Celine Dion is also a widow. Fun fact. Has she sung any songs about being widowed that you know of? Um, no, but there was like a lay, a lay a dozen roses, um, for my lover, blah, blah, blah. Like there was a song that my friend sent to me when Luke died and it, it was kind of like something about that. And it made me cry all the time. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think she does have songs about being a widow. Okay. So all right. anyways, that was really random. Um, how are you? you know that I can hit as high of a pitch as she can? No, you can't do it. I know. No, I can't. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm great, but I ask you. I know, and I answered. No, <laughs> no, like, you haven't you been here like, for a little while. Up? Yeah, like you've been on vacation and all kinds of stuff. So yes. they, they've heard from me for like three weeks straight. So let's hear from you. Okay, let's hear from me. Well, so I just got back from a super cool vacation with Tina. We went to Myrtle Tina. Beach. Yeah, it I don't even know amazing. anything about that. So tell tell us about Myrtle Beach. I don't even know. Uh, South Carolina, so North Carolina? South Carolina. Southern. Okay. So I get to add two new states to Ooh. the states that I've been to, North Carolina, South. I had to drive through North Carolina. We had to drive through North Carolina to get to South Carolina. Um, and it's just a popular um, beach resort on this side of the country. It's nice. funny for me because, you know, I lived really close to the beach for most of my life. And yeah. Even lived in Huntington Beach for many nice. years. And like we could walk to the beach. So um, but it was really nice to, um, you know, to be at the beach again and, and yeah. just in a totally, you know, my kids are older now, uh, just a different season of life. And it was, it was just really great all around. We did a couple different days of miniature golfing and we went down to the Fun. beach, we went out to lots of dinners and hung out poolside. We rented a condo and, um, nice. there was a, uh, you know, like a restaurant there in the, condo complex and um it was great we had we all had a really great time and it was just fun getting to spend such a long chunk of time together yes um we got lots of lots of pictures and lots of memories and we walked on the pier and um it was just great it was great i haven't been to the to the beach in quite a long time and uh the sand on the beach on at least at myrtle beach i was going to say on the east coast but at least at myrtle beach is much softer Oh, and more more powdery than like mm -hmm. California sand. California sand is more like granule, you know. Yes, granule. Like Washington for some reason. Gr granule. For some reason. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like totally drawing a blank right now. <laughs> chunky. It's more chunky. <laughs> chunky. chunky sand. <laughs> yeah, and and actually the sand was more white uh, oh. here, and it's more kind of yellowish on California's mm -hmm. coast. Um, so, anyways, uh, so that was really cool. Uh, we had a great time. Um, and oh, big news. I finally finished all of my real estate stuff and Yay. I passed both tests. I now officially have passed national and state tests. Nice. So Congratulations. I'm super proud of that. Thank you. You should. That's a Thank big deal. You. It took a lot of work to get to this point. And, um, you know, I had to get, as a lot of listeners remember, I had to get my high school diploma. Yep. And, uh, I just, you know, Tina kept encouraging me and believing in me that I could do it. And, I just kept uh, kept trying when I felt like there's no like I thought there was no way I could pass math, for mm -hmm. example. Also, the real estate test wasn't easy for me. It was yeah. you know some people say it's it's easy, some people say it's crazy hard. There's a lot of legal information you need to know, and um, so it was very hard for me. So I was super excited that I passed, and I, I passed pretty well. I got uh, you need a seventy to pass. 
I got an 80 on state and an 85 on national. Nice. So did, did pretty well. Um, and, uh, pretty, pretty excited about that. So, um, that is, you know, so I'm going to be starting soon doing, um, you know, working for my, I already have a broker lined up that I'm going to start working with. Um, actually the woman who helped me buy my house, um, she, she's a really great, really great woman, a nice, really nice realtor that I met randomly from mm-hmm. California. I was oh, scrolling crazy. through a list of realtors in Tennessee and saw her picture. And I was like, she seems really honest. And I called her up and we connected and now we're like friends. It's super cool. And so she got me in, in her brokerage. Um, and so, yeah, I go down and I have to go bring all my paperwork down to the broker this week and, you know, get insurance and get fingerprinted and all this stuff. And then I get my license. So, um, gosh, it's been so long. I feel like so much more has happened. My friend, Jeremy visited. That was really, really cool. That was why I couldn't record two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a great time. I hadn't seen him in a while. So anyways, that's, uh, the flyover of what's been up with me. What's been going on with you? Oh, you know, let's see, you know, just having all the kids home for the summer. I've talked about that a little bit. Um, so we have Joel's oldest son and my oldest son back and it's been fun. We played this really fun game. Um, I think you guys have a, do you guys have a Nintendo switch? Yes. I think you guys do. So I'd never played this game. It's called one, two switch. Have you ever played that one? No, super fun. It's kind of like how Peyton explained to me. It's like we sports, but you're actually doing it. So it's like go back to back or like look each other in the eye and then draw the gun and see who shoots each other first or like oh, juggle, that's cool. juggle plates and try to knock the other person down or air guitar who can do the best. Or there was a dance one. I love the dance one. And it was so fun. We had so much fun doing that with the four kids the other night you know, it's trying to, it's, it's a whole new world. Like trying, don't sing it. You were about to sing it. I knew you were mm-hmm. going to, mm-hmm. no. now you held it back. <laughs> Anyways, it's a whole new world, um, you know, blending families and, but it's been really like fun and just, we've had a lot of fun together. Um, Joel and I went rollerblading. Um, oh, hello nineties. Nice. Haven't done that for a while. <laughs> Do you guys uh, but, put on your big baggy pants? Yeah, no. <laughs> but like everybody was like, whoa, you're rollerblading. So good to see people out rollerblading. Like nobody does it anymore. And then yeah. here's, this is funny. Like I might even have to attach a video to this. Joel yesterday was like, I want to see if Bentley can pull me on the rollerblades. I'm like, what? So he goes outside <laughs> and he's like, then I get on the other side and I'm like calling Bentley and he, yep. He like pulled him all over like he was a horse. <laughs> That's like, awesome. It was hilarious. And then Grady did it too. And it was, it was just funny. That's so, cool. I've had just... dogs pull me on my skateboard before. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Yeah. So even just like, I'm exploring my own state way more that he's here. Cause he like finds all these places I didn't even know about, like right down from my house. We've been paddle boarding all the time. We do a lot of paddle boarding, um, which I absolutely love and just exploring that I, you know, when you live there, you don't do it as much, but when like you're new, you're looking at all these places and we found a church we love. So that's been really good. Nice. That's I awesome. think we've been there. Thank you. Like a couple weeks and I mean, a couple months and like he went over to the pastor's house and they like bonded they like made a fence together or something and like he's our same age you know like 29 (laughs) 29 right yeah Yeah. (laughs) and so him and joel like really got along and joel's really wanting to make friends and so he's been going to like events to try to meet guys and stuff because he doesn't know anybody here and Mm. so um that's been good just getting to know new people there and then my grief recovery classes have been going great i start a new one tonight at a coffee shop i made friends with the owner and her and a lot of her baristas are going to take it, take the class. No way. Yeah. So that's been amazing. Just, and the one that's going on right now, um, one of them is going on. We're halfway through and just seeing these, it's all women in that class, just watching them bond. We have these older widows and then like younger people and just seeing them support each other and watching them walk through their grief. Like it's so rewarding. And so I've been doing a lot of that. I've been tutoring um, which has been fun kids. Like I even have a kid from my student from my class that I taught at the beginning of school year, he's coming to my house for tutoring. And so just lots of, lots of different things, keeping me busy and really just enjoying interviewing for the podcast. Um, you guys will remember by the time you're listening to this last week, we, um, interviewed someone and we have a lot of interviews planned. In fact, um, we actually wanted to tell you that, that we're going to be doing more interviews. I know we said that before, but we are serious. It's just, we've been listening to other people's stories and really knowing that this is the direction we want to go. You guys have mm. heard from us for like 78 episodes. <laughs> so, 
we're still going to be here. Don't worry. You'll still keep up on what's going on with us, but we really would like to interview and we're serious. If you, we should say this at the end, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. If you want to be on our podcast, please reach out to us. Widowed too soon. M at gmail.com. If you have emailed us in the past, if you wouldn't mind reaching out again, we weren't in the place that we were doing tons of interviews before, but we're ready. You can re- send us another email, widow too soon on Facebook or Instagram, any of those places. We'd love to hear from you. Anyways, that was a little side note, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to you. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> it sounded like it was like a news anchor. <laughs> Tomorrow's to weather you. is going to be, no. <laughs> back to you, Mark. Yes. So no, I, I agree. And then, um, yeah, we are deciding to kind of switch gears and, um, start interviewing more people and think that that's going to be, um, really powerful for people to listen to and to hear so many more relatable stories and things like that. Um, because just the one that I listened to that as of when we're recording this, it hasn't aired yet, but by the time you hear this, you will have heard it. I've been listening to it and it's a very, very powerful episode. And it just made me think about it. Like we need to do this Mm -hmm. more. Um, So, but today we're talking about therapy for your widowed soul. How was that? (laughs) That was good. That was really good. We got new new microphones. Can you tell everybody? Mm -hmm. We're we're pretty proud of these crystal clear microphones. Mm -hmm. Um, We've upgraded from our $40 microphones to, to like 80 slightly better yeah to 80 dollar microphone we're not in the 250 dollar microphone no. range yet but uh we're, we're, we're funding there. this so <laughs> <laughs> we're trying our best um so anyway so we we wanted to talk about um different ways for you to find therapy for your widowed soul mm. um so michelle <laughs> what do you think uh <laughs> what do you think the weather is going to be like tomorrow no what mm. do you what do you think of when you think of um Let's let's think back. Think back to when you were a first baby widow, widow. Mm-hmm. a baby widow, a widow widow, a widow, a widow widow. I love that. <laughs> That's my new favorite saying. When you were just a widow widow, um, <laughs> what was what was um, things that you found therapeutic? Mm-hmm. That I'm I'm trying to think of this as I go. That you still do. If there's anything mm-hmm. that you still do today, because the therapy was so shall I say, therapeutic. (laughs) Oh, good. Well, there's something I started even before being a (laughs) widow, (laughs) widow. I just had to try to say it. Yeah. Before I was a baby widow, before I was a widow. Um, I've always, I wouldn't say always. So in my adult life, I got introduced to running. I didn't do it as a kid. I barely did it in college. But when Luke had been sick off and on, a friend introduced me to it and I did marathons and all this stuff. And so it's always been a way, at least for the last decade or more, to go out and deal with like what's going on in my life. In fact, Joel and I were just talking about running today. Like we either like running together or we like running alone. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I was like, I don't really have a running partner anymore besides him sometimes, but I like it because it's like, even sometimes I feel like God says, turn off. I'm always listening to podcasts, but it's like, turn it off and just listen to me you know, and I pray mm-hmm. through things. And so that's something that's always been good for me. Um, another one I did this today, um, is walking, like walking with friends. I do that a lot instead of just like sitting down. I there's like certain friends I do certain things with. And this one friend today, Monica, we've walked for years. And so I met up with her. We walked almost six miles today. It was really good. And that's just another way too to have time with other people. I enjoyed that right away. I remember when I was first widowed that I would make it a goal to see at least three friends a week. Like I would look at my week and be like, okay, this day I'm going to go to lunch with this friend this day. I'm going to walk this day. I'm going to run. And so setting up times with people and everybody's different. That's how I dealt with it is I wanted to talk to people. I wanted to, and I'm still like that because I work from home now, I have to see people. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I kind of look at my week. Okay. Who am I going to see this week? And what am I going to do? Um, so I would say those are some, um, you know, we've talked about this before. For me, it was learning to line dance. I haven't actually done that in a couple months, but I would like to do that some more this summer. Um, you know, taking new hobbies, but really taking time for yourself. We've said this before, but I'll say again, you've got to put on your own oxygen mask. I had to do the breath before you put on those <laughs> around you and you have to take care of you, especially if you have young kids at home or any kids at home, teenagers are a lot of work too. You've got to be taking care of you before you can 
go out and help those around you. And so what are you doing for you? I mean, seriously, stop for a minute, collaborate and listen. (laughs) I had to, I had to, but anyways, just like stop and think about what am I doing for me? And if you can't answer that, you got to think about it. You got to get therapy for your soul. That's a few examples. What about you? Because this Mm -hmm. is my perspective. I know your, your way of dealing with that, your therapy, therapeutic, your therapy, going to therapy. Yours is different. No, come on. You got it. <laughs> come on. Stick with it. <laughs> Your therapeutical ways. Therapy. That's not that even good. a word. That's therapeutical. Not even a word. I think yeah. that's a word. I don't know, but your ways would be different. So tell me about what you've done and you still do. And yeah, all that. Yes. Well, my ways, my ways are above your ways. Mm. No, Isn't that God who says that my ways oh, are my higher bad. than yours? We're, yeah. Sorry. Not Mark. Yes. Okay. I'm just kidding. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, no. So you know, I, a lot of the same things you mentioned. Um, so it was interesting for me because I, I am, <laughs> I guess you'd say Tina's explained it, like I'm an introvert extrovert. So mm-hmm. I'm introverted in that it is more of a natural tendency for me to be kind of solo mm-hmm. and kind of a loner. Um, I, I'm independent minded. I, I do better when I can just be in my thoughts and stuff like that but I do love being around people, but knowing I'm going to be around people makes me nervous. So it's Mm -hmm. just this weird thing. But then when I'm in the situation, I love it and I really enjoy it a lot. So um, for me, it was one of the things I had to do was kind of force myself to go have dinner with friends and to hit up people and kind of ask them, um, you know, if they wanted to do something or whatever. And then, so obviously that's different for me now being in Tennessee as, um, you know, I don't have this large network of friends to reach yeah. out to. Um, so that's changed a bit. So I can't say I still do that today. Um, but being outside for me, oh, yeah, is I love that really, too. really powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that I learned early on is I would just go take my dogs for a walk and yeah. whatever. And, and actually I did a live, um, something on our oh, Facebook page yeah. a while back where I was telling people that I was sitting at home and I just started having all these um, memories of what I watched Lacey go through. And I just started getting in this really dark space in my head. And I just, I said, you know what, I'm not doing like, I'm going to get up. This doesn't do me any good. You know what I mean? And so I got up, I grabbed the dogs. I went and walked at this beautiful nature preserve that's across the street from my house. And um, when I was over there, I just felt better. Even on my way over there, I started mm-hmm. feeling a lot better. And I was like, you know, I'm going to like do a live of this because I want people to see yeah. that you and I still have these moments, but we have tools and resources to pull from things we've learned. Yeah. And so getting outside can totally change your whole perspective on what's going on in your head. Yeah. Um, and so that, that's been a powerful one for me or um, just doing something that makes me feel good about myself. So Mm -hmm. starting, uh, you know, a new diet and like, and I don't mean, I don't know, I've never been like a real diet follower, so to speak, except for when, you know, I was doing keto with Lacey, but, um, just like eating healthy, making healthy choices, not taking in things that I know are bad for me, Mm -hmm. um, things like that. So that's something that makes me feel good about myself, getting my bike down, I, you know, I have this great mountain bike that, um, Lacey bought me for my birthday Mm. several years back. And, um, you know, I pump up the tires and I go for a bike ride and like, that makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel like I did something positive. Yeah. So anything I can do that make, even if it's cleaning the kitchen or, you know, taking my blower and going out to my backyard and just blowing all the, the leaves out of the way or whatever, like anything that makes me feel like I did something positive Mm. can help carry me through, um, you know, dark moments and things like that. And it was especially worse in the beginning, of course, um, because those moments came so much more often. Um, But for then, back then for me, it was um, getting a project, doing a project. And so, you know, I have, um, you know, I have some abilities to like fix things and upgrade things and things like that. And so I would just pick something and be like, you know what, I'm going to remodel my bathroom. And so for me, the cost of that is not nearly as expensive as it might be for somebody that doesn't know how to do that. Stuff. Right. So that might not be practical for everybody to just say, I'm going to remodel my bathroom. Yeah. For me, it was like, you know, maybe two or $300 and I totally made like a new bathroom, you know? Um, and so anyway, so there was stuff like that that helped me. But um, one of the big things that I I'd like to stress to people is traveling. Oh yeah, um, that's good. 
traveling, if you enjoy it, um, which, you know, I don't understand why somebody wouldn't, it's so neat to see new things and new places, but even at like set money aside, if it, if it's a money thing, like then put away, you know, 25 bucks a week or whatever you can afford, put away some money to go somewhere, pick a spot. Like for me, something, you know, I've done a couple other things, but something I really want, I really want to see Mount Rushmore. I really mm. want to see that. And I think that'd be so cool. And so that's something on my list. So you might look up how much is a hotel by Mount Rushmore for, you know, I mean, I can't imagine you really need to go to Mount Rushmore for more than a few days. You know, there's right. a couple of things to see in the area, but you know, so you plan, you know, a three or four day trip um, and then start saving for it. Look up if you need to fly there for me, I could drive there from here. Um, but, uh, if you need to fly, they say you do live in Southern California, Mount Rushmore is a bit of a drive, yeah. um, you know, but maybe you need to fly there. So look up airfare and start planning for it. And then give yourself something to, this is the point I'm getting at. Give yourself something to look forward to. Yes, for sure. That would be my big, uh, po- you know, point on that. So if you want the microphone back, so to speak, what do you, ha- what do you have to say about that? Well, <laughs> nice. I had a question not having to do with that, but I wrote it down to ask you because listeners might be wondering, and I've been wondering what's going on with your dogs. Remember one of them was really sick for a Mm. while. How are your dogs? Let's just talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm like, yeah, that was like a couple months ago. Yeah. So what happened was he had, um, Lyme disease. Oh, that's right. um, From a tick. And so, uh, it was like infecting his brain. Oh. And so he was having seizures and falling and he couldn't walk. And, um, the, the vet told me it was most likely cancer in his That's brain. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I said, well, could it be Lyme? Di-? Like if, if yeah. he does have Lyme disease, could it be causing this? And she kind of thought about it for a second. She's like, I mean, it's not likely, but it could, like, it would have to be really bad. And so mm-hmm. she's like, now we got the result back. He does have it, but it's not a lot but this test isn't always super accurate. So I want to take some of his blood and sorry to be gross, but I want to look at it under a microscope. Mm -hmm. And then she came back and she's all, Oh yeah, he's got like a lot of Lyme disease. And I was like, Oh, so she gave me an antibiotic and then just day by day, he started getting better. So he is a, um, he's called a taco terrier. (laughs) So he's because he's part Jack Russell, part Chihuahua. And, um, (laughs) But his life expectancy is 12 to 14 years and he is uh, 15 right now. So he's pretty old, but he's looking at him right now. He just came out from under the bed. (laughs) He, you know, he's, he like, it seems, he sounds like a cat coughing up hairballs a lot and he's, he's going blind and deaf slowly. Um, But uh, he's still, you know, I mean, he still wags his tail all the time. He's still eating and drinking. So thanks for asking. He's just, he's just just an old dog, but he's had a really good life, you know, for his breed. He's had a really long life. So um, he's like, he's like choking under my desk right now. (laughs) You can hear that. He's like, oh, they're talking about me. I'm going to come over there and cough up a hairball. I just thought people might wonder. So, and I was wondering whatever happened. I'm sure so many people were wondering about my dog. Yeah. They were like, what happened to his dog? (laughs) <laughs> keep us in suspense why don't you yeah for months anyways okay going back to the <laughs> so subject thank you yes. at hand um something I, else I wrote down that helped me was the paddle boarding it was my first or second mother's day I can't remember without Luke that I bought myself I went on Amazon bought an inflatable paddle board and took it by myself to a lake figured out it was like very empowering to figure out how to pump it up how to do all the things and how to use a paddleboard and then that's been something that I've done with friends by myself with Joel and that's been something really good that's part of nature like getting out in nature and just like I love this that's awesome I have a quick question for you about that okay do I remember correctly that the first time you took it out you didn't put enough air in it Yes. Very good. Okay. I thought I remember good memory. That. And you yeah. were like sinking or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was when I went with Stacy one time and we didn't have enough air and yeah, but it's all good. That's like, funny. I learned, you know, like, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's I awesome. mean, like every little thing, like it's weird because I have Joel to do all these things, but still I want to learn. Like now we keep our paddle boards all like pumped up. Like we're going to leave them all summer because he has a truck and like, it was empowering for me to learn how to like use the ratchet yes the ratchet things oh yeah yeah i know what that is now to put it through the board and make it stay on the truck and like i can do it by myself now 
even though he's there a lot of the times, but now I've like taken, I've took Stacy with me with the truck. I took Hayden. Cause I'm like, I know how to use the ratchet. So <laughs> anyways, it's still empowering to learn those things. And I know that was one of the biggest things as a widow, just learning how to do all of these things. And it can be overwhelming all mm -hmm. the things, but um, yeah, anyways, paddle boarding was something that I decided to do. And so just figure out a new hobby. Like it's really fun to learn something new. It maybe, is. Maybe you want to learn a new language. I tried a little bit of Portuguese since that's what Joel speaks, but I, you know, it's a second poquito? language. Uh, un poquito. That's Spanish. That's not I know, Portuguese. but isn't Portuguese There's, similar to Spanish? They are similar. Like Joel can completely understand Spanish. Not okay. necessarily So are you it. sure it's not poquito and Portuguese? Uh, it could be. It could be. I'll have to ask him. They're very similar. So at church, there was this Why lady. don't I ask him, Joel? He's not here. Is it Paquito? I oh, know. But, but here, yes, yes. He then he can answer you. <laughs> I'm just Anyways, kidding. Anyways, it'll be Wicks, the delay. So at church, these people, which that's a whole other side story. Um, These people, like the lady knew Portuguese because I don't know why she did. And so she starts, oh, you speak, you were in Brazil as a missionary, blah, blah, blah. And then she starts speaking and then she tries to talk to me. And I'm like. No, I was never a missionary <laughs> with him. Like, I don't know Portuguese, but it's every time I was just telling my friend on a walk, like it's awkward every time at church because it we're new meeting people. They're trying to figure out like stuff. And I'm like, no, we just got married. Like they're trying to figure out like, okay, you're, uh, I don't know. It's just awkward. I hate having that conversation. Like, no, we just got married. And then, yeah, it's a whole thing. Cause then you're, you're widowed, not divorced. Well, I'm widowed, not divorced. And like, it's the whole thing, but that's a side note. Anyway. Hey, I'm curious of something that's yeah. totally off topic, but do you run into, uh, say you're with Joel's son or mm -hmm. Joel's with your kids and they say, Oh, yes. your mom or your dad. It has happened. And, then, and do you guys correct them? Um, it's only happened a few times. So the first week that Joel's son was with us at church, there was a guy talking and he said something about, oh, you're, um, no, he said it to Hayden. The first week Hayden was there. He said something about your dad and we didn't correct him. And Joel's like, I didn't even notice I would have corrected him. And it was so quick. I didn't really know what to say, but Hayden was like, that was awkward. Um, mm. and then I feel like there's another time. Too. It's only been a few times so far. Mm -hmm. Um, but I usually just, I try to like take the awkwardness out and be like, we just got married. This is Joel's son, you know, like mm -hmm. try to um, make it so they know, but then it's still awkward too. Like, yeah, it's just, it's weird. That's a whole weird it is, dynamic. Yeah, it's, it's just something that you don't anticipate or think about, think about, yes. um, you know, and so when it comes up, you're kind of like, uh, what do we yeah. do? You know no, what I mean? And for me, my kids are usually, um, Correct. You know, yeah. Like Luke just comes out with it, you know, like he's just like, <laughs> oh, I could see yeah, that. Cute. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so, you know, I just, I just randomly made me think about that because it's something you just don't anticipate going into it, you know? Yes. Like I feel the, like, oh, yeah. Like people are going to make assumptions, you know? Yeah. I'll, I'll, when I remember the other one, I'll tell you, but there was another one like that where it was like, yeah. Or I just don't say, I don't remember. I don't remember, but mm -hmm. it is a whole different situation and it feels a little awkward sometimes. Yeah. Oh, I know. Haley told me when she was doing one of her drives for driver's ed, um, the person saw her, her phone and saw a picture. She has a picture of her and Luke when she was little and they're like, Oh, is that your dad? And he's like, she's like, yeah, that's really cute. And she's like, Oh, you drive with your dad a lot or something. And she's just like, mm -hmm. like, she's like, I didn't want to tell her. I didn't want that. I didn't want to go into it. And I didn't want her to say, I'm sorry. And so she just was like, oh yeah, she's something she kind of lied because she didn't want to deal with it or like mm. didn't really address it because she didn't want to, I guess that's a different situation, it's, but it's, well, no, no, it's, it's very relatable and it, it's sometimes easier, right. To just yes, not, to explain. not explain it all. Cause they don't need to know, you know what right. I mean? Like there's so many situations where the, now obviously there's situations where we do tell people, Yeah. but then there's other situations where it's like, who cares? Like it's somebody seating us at a restaurant that we've never been to that we're never going to go to again we're traveling through or whatever you know what i mean where then it's kind of like why correct it right. why make a thing out of it you know and we uh, don't even say um because we don't think the kids are all comfortable but we don't even say step kids like he'll introduce mm -hmm. like um he was somewhere with hayden i'm like well how did you introduce him he said well i said my wife's son and that's how i've mm -hmm. done it with his i'll say this is my husband's son 
Mm. instead of like stepson or step because they're not really comfortable yeah. with those terms oh and then the boys had something happen to them when they were both talking to someone at church the two older boys and they're like oh something about them being brothers mm. and then the other guy knew like he must have talked to joel before it's like no i think they're stepbrothers and they're like yeah like there's it's still mm. just a weird dynamic like they're not used yeah to it you yet. still have to get used to it for sure and so and what i was thinking of a minute ago was uh like Haley in that kind of situation at like mm-hmm. a restaurant or it's like why would she um yeah. want to talk about it or whatever like I get it and in that situation she was in I understand why she wouldn't want to talk about it mm-hmm. uh, because the person's just trying to make small talk right <laughs> and then you don't want to go into this big old thing that just makes them feel like oh sorry you know um so I get that um but yeah anyways so Therapy Sorry, were you? Soul. Yeah, therapy for your, this. I therapy, was just talking you know? about paddle boarding and just, you know, taking time for yourself. We've said all this stuff before, but it's a good, a good little reminder. We have new listeners or people who haven't really thought about this for a while, like to take care of yourself. And maybe that's, um, maybe it is finding more friends that get it. Maybe it's about finding widowed friends. That's huge. Like I'm surprised. Like when I do events for widows, I did one for Mother's Day that. They like didn't know other widows until that event. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's really important to, I have an instant bond. I was talking to um, the woman we interviewed last week um, about just like, there's this automatic connection when you meet someone that's widowed, like you didn't want to be here, but you are and you get it and all of that stuff. So anyways. And I think it's, I think it's um, important for people to not only just think about this stuff, but like to actually do it. So if mm-hmm. let's say you're somebody who likes and you enjoy writing. Yeah. Like go sit at your computer right now and go start do writing it. something. Yeah. Like do it. You know, like if you have been talking about uh, eating healthier, like do you it. don't have to wait, start right now. Like mm-hmm. go eat a banana or so, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not telling people what to do, of course, but I'm just saying like, if, yeah, no, it's because true. for me, I, you know, I'm very much like a, Oh, I'm going to do that. Right. But then it takes me a long time to actually Follow do through. it. Yeah. So yeah. do it. We're telling yeah, you. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Go, go for a walk today. You know, <laughs> today. Listen to, like, Don't push put it pause, off. push pause on this podcast, get your shoes on, go for a walk and then push play and listen, you know, keep listening or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're back. Now you're walking. Good job. (laughs) Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. Yes. No, but it is that take action today. You're not a tree move. Like there's that whole analogy. Like I'm, I'm planted here. No, you're not a tree. You can get up and move. And so you can get up and you can take part in your healing and you can leave. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yes. That was the corniest, corniest, corniest. Corniest uh, that you've done. Anyways, the point is don't put off today. What can be done tomorrow? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> oh, it's backwards. <laughs> we don't put off till, till tomorrow. What you can do today. Yes. Yes. Anyways, um, I, I, yeah, really I agree know. with that. And, um, you know, I just, yeah, I just think it's really important to be, um, proactive in your, yes. in your healing and, You know, something also that we haven't kind of talked about in a while that I think it's important for you, those of you who are new um, or relatively new that like, it's okay to laugh again. For sure. It's okay to smile. It's okay to find happiness in something. There's nothing wrong with that. If you hear something funny, don't feel like you need to um, perform for people because we've all been through. I know Michelle and I have been through that. I know Tina went through it and where we all just kind of, you know, you don't know how you're supposed to feel how, because other people are watching you and you have this constant pressure of feeling like you're supposed to um, act a certain way. And that if somebody tells a joke that like, you're not allowed to laugh at it because you're grieving. Yeah, exactly. And, um, I just want you to know, like grieve when you feel grief, but if you feel joy or happiness, like feel that that's a blessing. Do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's like Nike, just do it. Just, just do it. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Anyways, so so yeah. See, I'm trying to think about any more therapy. Some people like getting massages. I don't like that, but some people do that or like spa treatments or, you know, find what works for you. What yeah. is your, your thing? Retail therapy. Retail, you know? Yes. But just don't, yeah, we had that whole thing about, <laughs> yeah, don't do too much, but you know, yes. find, 
find something that is good for you. And a like, hobby for me for a while. I, I, I enjoyed um, skateboarding again. Nice. And I found out that, you know, I spent so much time doing it when I was younger that I still have muscle memory in my forties and can still do a bunch of tricks. And That's I really awesome. enjoyed it. And it's, it's cool because I had a different mindset. Now when yeah. I was young, my goal of skateboarding was to become professional. That was mm. the reason I did it. And so right. I had to get better every day. And so if I was struggling with a new trick and I couldn't land this trick, I would get mad. Mm. And, um, but now I don't care. And it's, and so it's, fu it's funny because I'm not nearly as good as I was, mm -hmm. but I have way more fun now because, yeah. you know, I'm that old dude at the skate park now, you know, <laughs> right. I'm that, you know, and I haven't done it in a while, but every time I do it, I'm like, man, this is great. Like, it's just fun to just ride around and go, to, uh, go up and down all the ramps. And, um, so if there's anything also, it doesn't have to be a new hobby. If there's something you right. enjoyed recycle, when you were younger, mm -hmm. you, you know, get into it again. Like. That's a good There's idea. Something you used to be good. If you used to like playing soccer or uh, tennis or whatever, find somebody, go play tennis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, go, go play catch with a football with somebody or something just like, like kind of find a way to like reenter your youth because it's still fun. It it's is. still fun to like, you know, if you were into it, you know, if you don't enjoy this sort of thing, then you're not going to relate, but like um, let's, well, let's, I'll give you a better example. Let's say you used to be into art in high school. And you haven't thought of it since, or you used to play an instrument in high yeah. school and you haven't thought of it since, like, try it out again. You might yeah. really enjoy it again. Um, but, you know, what I was going to say is that not everybody might relate to, like, um, you know, if you think back to your childhood and you used to love playing catch with a football <laughs> with your friends, uh, go try it out again. Go out to a big field or go to the beach or something and toss a football back and forth. And, mm -hmm. you know, because in the beginning, if you remember this, Michelle, it was like, it was getting through the next hour. Yeah, it was. Was the mm -hmm. goal. Like, because it was, sometimes it was so like hard to, to stop thinking about your reality. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you can do something to, to burn a couple hours, that's great. You know? So yeah. anyways. For sure. I think that's about all I got to say about that. It's all that. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, ice cream. Sorry. <laughs> um yeah do you want to knock my forest impressions out of the park i know it's amazing i'm so good at forest gump and humble <laughs> i know that too <laughs> do you want to close this out in prayer yes okay uh, i will lord thank you so much for giving this uh us this platform that we can um speak to people and hopefully help you know at least a couple people and to getting through another day of this most difficult season of life. And I pray for all those listening, Lord, that um, you would provide them joy for the day and and something um, funny to make them laugh and something, uh, maybe a memory or something to make them smile, um, something fun to do, something active, some kind of therapy for their soul. Um, and we lift all of those listening up to you, Lord, and pray that um, you would guide them into their next season of life and that you would provide beautiful blessings, um, over their life and in ways that they never thought, um, and things that they never thought they would feel again. And we pray for those provisions, Lord, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to say the same thing. I'm going to mix it up, switch it up, so, switch it up. So this is actually more important. If you are not subscribed, if you could take a second and make sure that you push the subscribe button, that's more important than giving us being five stars, because this way you never miss an episode right? So wherever you're listening, Spotify, Apple podcasts, you know, any of those, make sure that you're subscribed. Then if you want to do something on top of that, give us a little being five stars. That's awesome. But the most important thing is that you're subscribed so that you can always hear our episodes. Um, like I said earlier, we'd love to have you as a guest on our podcast, widow too soon M at gmail.com and all the places, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. And, uh, yeah, I think that's what we got for you today. Tell us, tell us your, the things you've been through. We want to hear it, how God has helped you. Yes. Yes. We would love to hear that. Um, all stories are unique. If you're like, well, you've already had one like this. No, we don't have your story. Only you have been through your story and only you can probably relate to certain people that we can't relate to. So it's kind of like, we've just realized this recently that, I mean, there's only so much you can hear of Mark and Michelle for two years, um, <laughs> but it's like, 
everybody's story is so unique. We can only reach so many people, but we feel like we can reach more people with your help, with your stories. And so even if you're like, no, it's similar. No, it's not the same as ours. So we'd love to hear it. And the more people that I've been talking to and interviewing, I'm just realizing, whoa, everybody has a story and God is using people in so many different ways. And so if you would like your story to be heard in the hopes and prayer that it will help somebody else, please reach out to us. And if it takes us a little time, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, we're just trying to organize all these guests that from the past that want to do it and currently. And so we will, we will get back to you. So thanks and have a great day. God bless. Bye.